Yellowstone, the world's first and most famous national park. There's more hot springs here than anywhere else on the planet and more wild animals than anywhere else in America. But for most of last century, one creature, one sound, was missing from its natural symphony. Not anymore. When you hear that deep guttural howl of a wolf come up out of a dark night, there's something about that that is just true nature, true wildness, and that's what makes wolves special. But the wolves aren't the only ones howling. There are plenty of people who reckon the only good wolf is a dead one. There are three kinds of terrorists. There are foreign terrorists like Bin Laden. There are domestic terrorists like Defenders of Wildlife, Earth Justice, and the wildlife terrorist is the Canadian wolf. It's a pretty hot issue, isn't it? It's very hot. It's not even red hot, it's white hot. No scientist is more intimately involved with wolves in Yellowstone than Doug Smith. After they were exterminated nearly a century ago, they were reintroduced from Canada in 1995. This is a very a, a nice looking wolf. Um, real pleased to capture him. Doug has tracked and tagged every wolf now calling the park home. His teeth are fairly beat up. He's competing with other packs and he's bringing down elk and bison and deer, so his teeth show that. So it was the right thing to do to bring them back? I absolutely think this is the right thing to do. Ethically, ecologically, uh, completely wiping out another species, I think is ethically wrong. Has it been more successful than you thought it would be? Absolutely more successful than I thought it would be. Some would say too successful. Today, there are nearly 100 wolves in the park and close to 2,000 throughout the Northern Rockies. In this part of the Wild West, stretching through the states of Wyoming, Idaho and Montana, they are the number one carnivore. Without them, the number of elk in the park exploded and the ecosystem was out of whack. It may not be pretty to watch, but it's the way things have always been. Yeah, hey Doug, uh, looks like we've got the uh, Lamar Canyon wolves over by Hitching Post. Uh, looks like they've killed a bighorn sheep overnight. Um, you guys should get here as quick as you can. Okay, I copy that. Uh, we'll be headed your way. Uh, talk to you in a bit. Three Alpha 60. What do we got? Well, it sounds like they got a kill. Uh, they found it this morning and it's, it's rare. So this is all part of the fun of the field work. It is. If you love this kind of stuff, then you become a biologist. I'm not it, quite convinced, Jason. Oh! oh. <laughs> I... <laughs> oh. <laughs> sorry. So, sorry, Dad. No, that's all right. <laughs> Eventually, we made it through the snow, past the wolf tracks, and over to the kill scene. Well, they didn't leave much, did they? This is fairly typical. I mean, they're going to clean it up like this. It's a nasty way to go, isn't it? Well, you know, I don't know what to say to that. This is hard to say, but this is nature's way. This is how life and death in nature occurs. I, I really want you folks to see this because this is more how it is than it's not. For scientists like Doug Smith, returning the wolf to Yellowstone was putting the wild back into the wilderness. It had to happen for this place to be complete. But there's now more wolves outside of the park than there are in it. So it's gone from being the world's most successful reintroduction program to the most controversial. And once again, war has been declared on the wolf. What if you had a wolf here on your property? I'd kill it immediately. No questions asked and I'm not calling anybody. Doesn't bother you that you could spend a year in jail? If you I'm did not that. going to jail for a year for killing a wolf. If they have prosecuted you to the full extent of the law, it could have been a hundred thousand dollar fine and a year in jail. O.J. Simpson wouldn't have got that. That's what these wolf lovers have done. 
an American legend. Nothing has Ron Gillette reaching for his cult single action faster than a wolf. Could you kill a wolf with that thing? Absolutely. I'd love to. You bet. Love to try. I'd get him. As far as Ron is concerned, the wolf is the number one threat to a cherished way of life. He claims the grey wolf is an old enemy, once again terrorising game herds and livestock. My granddad herded sheep here in this basin. My feet are 25 feet in the ground. I love this place. It's one of the crown jewels of the American West. But the way this wolf devastation is taking place without our big game herds and our animals, this will be a desert. The Canadian wolf is the most cruel, vicious predator in North America. It's just gotten completely out of hand. And if there's no end to it, then there's not going to be very many people who will who survive something like that. So you think a rancher like yourself could go out of business? Sure, yeah. So this was the original homestead? Yeah, yeah, they built this when they first came here from Missouri. And uh, that when was, was about that? 1878. Justin O'Hare is a fifth generation Montana rancher and claims the wolf is making him and plenty of others an endangered species. On average, he loses eight to 10 cattle a year. So a lot of times you'll find where an animal's been killed but you won't find any bones, you won't find any hide, you won't find hair. All you'll see is a little bunch of grass there that was what was left in its stomach. So the wolf uh, eats everything else of the animal? Everything, everything. Sometimes you'll find the ear tag out of the cow and that's about it. They would have to be trapped, they'll have to be poisoned, there'll have to be a season on them 365 days a year. It's a war. It could turn into a civil war. And I'll tell you, we are not just standing around getting red-faced, making threats to people. If it's going to be a war, Nancy Taylor will be the first one into the trenches fighting for the wolf. I would take a bullet for one of my wolves. If there was somebody threatening my wolf with a gun, I would walk in front of that person, between them and my wolf and they would have to shoot me first. I think you actually mean that. I do mean it. I don't say things I don't mean, I do mean it. I would actually make them shoot me first. So if you call them, will they come? Um, not always, so it looks like Coco's gonna come for a visit. This is Coco. Coco. How do you, how do you pat a wolf? You put, just put the back of your hand up. I never thought I'd ask her, that question. She's gonna check you out. You're right, and she may give you kisses. She wants to see who you are. Yes, baby. Nancy is a wolf breeder and puts her mouth where her heart is. Oh, thank you. Thank you, baby. Passionately defending the right of wolves oh, to exist not just in Yellowstone, but throughout the US. Actually, we moved in on the wolf. The wolf did not move in on us. So things changed for the wolf. You know, all of a sudden we come in, we want to compete with the wolf. And a lot of times what the hunters are mad about is, um, I have to laugh when I say this, but it's true, the wolf is the better hunter in most cases. And man does not like that. Okay, no. oh. <laughs> okay I'm just go, go. remaining relaxed. <laughs> Nancy says wolves are not the vicious killer they're so often portrayed to be. But when you're this close, any sudden movement gets your heart racing. Oh, that, was a, that, was a, that was a bite. No, you don't take her fur. You don't take the fur. No more. No. What do I do with it? Uh, <laughs> just, oh. just put it up high. Hold it up high. But there you go. Okay, let's use that, that incident right there. Mm. Okay, he wanted that. You're a stranger. And if he would have been, you know, a real aggressive killer, he would have had that and he'd have had you too. We've just spotted one of the wolf packs here at Yellowstone. It's seven o'clock in the morning. There's three adults and four pups. They've been together for about a year now, and it's known as the Lamar pack. And you can just make them out up there on the rise. We, we get to see them every day, and for many of these wolves, we, we see them their whole lives. 
A winter's morning in Yellowstone is the best time to see wolves, and wolf watching has become big business. No one is better at spotting them than Rick McIntyre. Here, the wolves are known by numbers, not names, so the alpha female of this pack is known as 06. Her mother, by the way, was very, very popular with the male wolves. <laughs> and uh, the 06... So is this one by yeah, the looks of things. She's been through a lot of boyfriends. Um, mm. One mating season, she set a record. She bred with five different males. And, but um, she's just a tart. <laughs> well, she's been around the block a few times. <laughs> And it's the sheer ability of wolves to go around the block that's taken everyone by surprise. There are at least four times the number of wolves than originally anticipated, which has fueled calls for culling. It's inevitable the shooting will start. The question is when and how many. For men like Ron Gillette, the answer is simple, all of them. Another fallacy, the wolf lovers tell you only the alpha male and female have pups. They all breed. They're, they're out of control like the rabbits in Australia. It's all based on how we view nature. If you view nature as something for us to make our living on, you're probably against wolves. If you view, view nature as something we should live in harmony with, you're probably in favor of wolves. And those two mindsets, philosophies of life, if you will, are colliding on this wolf issue. I feel sorry for the wolf. So you either love the wolf or you hate the wolf. It's exactly correct. Hello, I'm Alison Langdon. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.